an empty game object, reset its position and rename it to environment. This will store our environment objects. Let's add a cube as our ground. I'm going to position it at negative 0.5 since the height is 1 and we want its top surface to be at 0. I'll scale it by 100 on the x and z axis. Now I'm going to create a folder called materials and create a ground material inside of it. I'll use a dark color for the ground. I'm also going to add cubes just so we can visualize our movement as it's hard to do so with a single colored plane surface. Now let's start working on our player. Add an empty game object called player and add a capsule as a child of the player. Add a camera, bring it up to 0.9 on the Y. I'm also going to reduce the clipping planes and increase the FOV. Now go to the parent player game object and add a rigid body. And finally, add a new script for our player movement. Let's create a folder called scripts and put the player movement script inside of it. Now I'm going to open it up in Visual Studio. Let's start by deleting the start and update methods. To stay organized, I'm going to add a header for our movement variables. Now the first variable we need is the movement speed, so I'm going to type public float movement speed, and I'll give it a default value of 6. Now let's create a vector 3 that will store our movement direction. We will also need two floats for our vertical and horizontal movement. Next we'll need a reference to our ridge body, and in the start method we'll get the component. Let's start by creating a method that handles our input and call it an update. Inside the method, we want to get our vertical and horizontal movement. Let's start with the horizontal movement, input.getAxis raw horizontal, which returns 1 if you're pressing the D key or the right arrow key and it returns negative 1 if you're pressing the A key or the left arrow key. Now we can set our movement direction. To do this I'm going to type move direction equals transform.forward times vertical movement plus transform.right times horizontal movement. We're using transform.forward and transform.right so we move in the direction relative to where the player is looking. Now we can actually move the player. Let's create a method called moveplayer and call it in fixed update. The reason we are calling it in fixed update is because fixed update has the frequency of the physics system and our movement is physics based since we're using a rigid body. This way our movement will look smooth. For more info go to the link in the description. In the move player method, we want to add a force to our rigid body in our movement direction. So let's use rb.addForce and pass in our move direction for our direction and force mode.acceleration for our force mode. Now we want to be able to move a certain speed so let's use our move speed variable that we created earlier and multiply it to our move direction. With rb.addForce you also don't need to make a frame rate independent. Again for more info links in description. Right now our movement vector looks like this. As you can see our magnitude is greater on the diagonals. To fix this we can normalize the movement by just typing dot normalize in front of our move direction. This essentially ensures that the magnitude is just 1. Again for more info, links in description. One final thing we need to do before testing is to freeze the rotation on the rigid body. To do this go back to the start method and type rb dot freeze rotation equals true. Now we can head back into unity. As you can see our player is moving very slippery and very fast. To fix this I'm going to change the rigid body's drag. Let's create a method that handles drag and call it an update. In the method we can change the rigid body drag to a value of something like 6. Let's create a new variable for this. This is all for now. In the future we're going to come back and add more to this. Let's head back into unity and test this out. As you can see we're not slippery anymore but we're still moving pretty slow. So let's create a movement multiplier variable. Set it to 10 and multiply it to our move direction. As you can see, we are moving around, but the objects in the scene are jittering. To fix this, head over to the rigid body and set the interpolation to interpolate. We're done, for now. We have a nice base for our movement, and in the next video, I'll show you how to look around. If you found this tutorial helpful, please consider leaving a like, and if you enjoyed and are planning to watch the next one, please subscribe.